Today we are going to talk about the information aspect. You know, uh, information aspect is a very important part for user experience. You know, it, it defines the logic of your product. And you know, uh, uh, information architect, if you want to get a job in a big company, an uh, uh, information architect gets a very high salary. You know. But it requires you to um, be able to analyze the information and design the information in the right, right logic. Um, <clears throat> so, the definition for information architect, you know, um, it's a structure, structural design of shared information environment. It's art and science of organizing and labeling web content, websites, internet, online communities, and social support, disability and fundability. You know, um, the internet has a lot of information, you know. Uh, so we already talked about how to do user research, how to work, uh, and we step by step until last class uh, you define your feature list, right? So your your website or your or your mobile site, your mobile app is for the target users, and all the users want to get something from your 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 service, your product, your platform. So you are going to do the classification and heritage for this product, labels and tagging in the navigation and the way funding in the or search. You know, anyway, in a short word is to say you organize the information, make your users very easy to access all the information, all the service you are providing. You know. So uh, it requires a very broad knowledge, you know. Um, even even in in all, in all the big companies, you may have different roles, different people, just in charge of a very specific uh, field. In that case, you need to be able to work with every people, you know, in a team. You know, you need to be able to work with researchers, uh, work with psychologists, work with. Uh, uh, user, your graphic people work with programmers, you know. But uh, yourself, you need to understand. You don't have to be an expert in different areas, but you need to understand, like understand your users, what they want through all the research methodologies we we already talked about, right? Um, like personas. And as you know, graphic, task analysis, test testing, inquiries, you know, uh, surveys. Then uh, you, you need to define the content, right? You need to define your content for your site or your, or your mobile service. Uh, <coughs> the metadata, the value, the formats, the structure, you know, the content, navigation, labeling, you know. You also have all the context, you know, you need to understand the context for business model, business value, uh, politics, culture, resources, you know, um, and uh, management, managing clients, you know, or, uh, and also tech technician can stretch. You know, sometimes you have a very fancy ideas, but maybe uh, technology will cost a lot, you know, to have that real life. Sometimes, you know, that's open, often happens, you know, you have to compromise a little bit. Yeah. So it's about balance between uh, users, con content, and context. So I guess you guys, every people used to play with the maps, right? So the web or the, or the mobile is like a map. So all your users, all your target users, they have a they have a destination they want to go, you know. So they want some people be able to, they want some people be able to give them a, a guide, you know. So our job as an information architect is to design the road, 
given my previous side, so they know how to achieve their goal, how to how to reach their target. You know, that's our job. Okay, so of course, um, to, to do the information architect design, at first you need to uh, define the side goals, you know. Uh, maybe you say it's very, very, uh, very simple and e easy and it's obvious, but it's also a very common mistake. It often happens, you know, especially in, in big companies. Many, com many people are working together and many people are lost even forgot what's the goal we want to achieve. Or many people don't have a clear and the income understanding, you know. And that may cost you a lot of uh, trouble when you cooperate together. So defining the size goal solves a lot of problems, you know. So um, just anyone can tell you what's your, your goal for your service, you know. Do, do you have a one sentence or two sentence? Richard, come on. Uh, yeah, to help um, children learn the values of taking care of an animal and it shows their parents if they can succeed at that task. Okay. Okay, Nico? Um, I don't think I've boiled it down to one sentence. Okay. Then what? You can uh, describe it in the uh, normally the, the more simple the better, you know. Yeah. Well, it'll be used to uh, help people specifically people who have dogs. Uh, better notice. Yeah. Better write it down, you know, so have a video go, you can test. Uh, back, back on uh, this, um, uh, I went to a, a career again about the client's uh, feedback. If you want to be considered them uh, when they're judging and uh, get the, the scholarship, uh, they want to achieve uh, by really designing the mobile pads, bring, bring closer, bring your phone closer to you, you know. So that's the goal you want to achieve. You know, because they are manufacturing the mobile phones. So, yeah, how to in, um, encourage the intimacy between your phone and yourself. Yeah. That's the goal you want to achieve. Uh, okay, then you, normally you also need to understand what's the mission and purpose for the company or the organization, you know, especially when you're working for a client, you know. Uh, you have to study their uh, Branding, the mission, the company history, background, you know, you get a, a better understanding, you know, then you wouldn't go too far away from what they want, you know. <coughs> and of, of course, we have uh, studied a lot about uh, intended audience, right? You got to know your target users. We build personas, right? We also analyze stakeholders, right? So, um, so think about who are your intended audience? What, how they think, how they talk about, like last, last class we, we practiced the like, empathy bank, right? About how they think, how they uh, and what's their plan, uh, what's their game, all the things. So, why people will come to your site? This is actually a very uh, big problem. Every people want to find out. Myself, I'm also trying to find out the magic between the link, the emotion link, to link you back to my service. You know, like, um, you know, currently I'm, I'm uh, promoting my uh, Good Day app, right? I saw many people download them, but they don't quite often use that use my app, and they're still trying to uh, solve this problem by like providing some uh, actual value to them, you know, to link them back to us. But that really happens. You know, I know recently Nielsen uh, done uh, research, like many people download hundreds of apps to your phone, but most apps you just download once, use once, then you may delete, or you just ignore it 
you know, then you don't use that. Normally, you just use 10 to 15 ads, you know. So, uh, so many people want to deep go in this industry, but how you really can keep users? Of course, you, you will do promotion to keep them come to you, but how to keep them return to you, you know, and keep them with you, you know? It, it's a challenge. It's really a challenge. Everybody wants to find out, you know. So, like, also, um, an important part is that uh, return users. That's why when you see, uh, when I did uh, the, um, the site for the uh, Go Pack Up uh, travel booking, I will put the uh, booking uh, there for, uh, for return users. So they don't have to click again. Even if you try um, uh, Geico, you know, or, or State Farm uh, insurance uh, uh, quotation uh, service. If you try to get close once, and you, after you return, they automatically get to know everything about you, you know, about your last post, post, post. And also, I think one very good site using this is uh, LinkedIn. I don't know if you guys have noticed. LinkedIn, if you use this kind of computer access LinkedIn to your account, and you, you didn't log out, so every time you come back again, it will remember you. You don't need to log in again. But if you want to do some activities, like you want to add a new friend, you want to send the in inbox messages, they require you to log in again you know, to make sure the security. And normally you don't log in again in the uh, next year. Uh, we also did uh, competitors research, right? You guys already analyzed what's the competitors, how they're doing in the market. But when you actually designing the site or designing the mobile service, you want to compare their actual features as well. And also their uh, SEL information, their feature information, you know, their uh, usability information. You want to compare them. Normally, how people do it in the makers, the comparison. You know, we don't uh, give them a, a scores, you know, to, uh, with, with some uh, criteria, you know, to compare. Yeah. Of course, to decide, to decide your site content is also very important, right? Um, what's the content you, you want to provide? You know, you, you also want to give a group your content, label labeling your content. You know, um, last class you already have the uh, feature list, right, come out. Uh, so normally what you do is you will, you decide your site content, then you will create a content list. It's not uh, like a feature list, it's a content list, or we call content human tree. Um, <coughs> So content inventory or content uh, strategy, uh, if you big companies really have a special role, special position for people to do this, called content, content strategies. You know, content strategies, they, de they define what's, what kind of the priorities of the, of the content. Define what kind of should be in it, what kind of should not. You know, define, they also analyze stakeholders you know, uh, analyze target users, you know, do a lot of research. Um, <clears throat> analyze the business requirements and so on. But, but don't miss, uh, mistake content strategist with copywriters, you know. Um, a copywriter is the, the guy, the person who work on the actual wording, actual text in your site or in your uh, mobile service, you know. So they, um, they will make sure um, the, the, the way they, they talk about your service and every sentence, every wording uh, in your site is in a very proper way, you know. Um, also no grammar, no misspelling, you know, all these things. So, even though we might use many ways 
to attract users and persuade the users. But the copywriter is only to use their wording, the, the, the language, the, the wording to attract the users, to, to persuade the users, you know. Even though you might also use some visual languages and other things, you know. So, so don't uh, max uh, mis misunderstood uh, content strategies in the copyright. You know, um, content strategies they define the website priority, define the content, what content is needed. You know, uh, as 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 existing content, you know, etc. Identify sources. You know. Uh, copywriters, they only implement all content. And uh, a very um, obvious difference is that a content strategy may also, may also decide, besides the text, the, kind, uh, the wording, but also you, you got to have images, you got to have videos, audios in your site, you know. But copywriter wouldn't work with images or, or, or uh, videos, audios, they wouldn't. They just basically many for the money. Okay. <clears throat> so you need to uh, create the content inventory for, for your site or for your service. Uh, normally, it a uh, inventory contains four parts. Uh, the, the view, you know, which is what's viewed by the, by the visitors, by the audience. The usage, how the content is being used by the visitors, you know, the intent, and also uh, the origin, you know, like the version, the authorities, you know. Like this for the view, you know, the graphic, the font, the size of the text, everything you saw, you know, every visitor, everything they, they saw will be listed in the content inventory. Um, this is for origin, like who, who wrote this, was, what's the version number, uh, who is the author, and uh, at what date, you know, some information like this, you know. Uh, because for any big, big uh, products, you will have many versions, you know. Uh, it's quite often you can't lost, you know, you, you want, to, or, or this version has a very big bug and you want to uh, return back to the former version, you know. So, um, you, you also need to keep this kind of information up to date. And also the usage, you know, the page views, unique page views, you know, every, every time on the page. Also maybe so, social networking, uh, how many people uh, like your uh, your links? Some information like this. Normally, you can uh, get this information from uh, like Google Analytics, or you can get uh, all the data from your server. Yeah. <coughs> the intent. Uh, the intent means um, how the what the users want to do and how this content actually. Um, how 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 well it meets their requirements, you know, something like this. So you know, then you put everything together. You know, you have uh, normally a content inventory. You have a uh, page URL, title of the uh, page, you know, descriptions, uh, what the time and the date uh, the page was created, the version. You know, and who created this, uh, who wrote this page, you know, expiration date, if, if it is what, you know, uh, other page links to this page, and other uh, note, you know, or page status, you know, something like this, every status. So this is an example, you know, so you have title, page, type, you know, make it a spreadsheet, you know, Excel file, normally. Uh, yeah, again, you know, remember everything taught in the class will be in your final uh, presentation, in final documentation. So, uh, even last class, you guys asked me uh, how many pages we will need finally. I said, no number limited. But if you do everything, 
everything uh, seriously, carefully, there will be no less than 180 for sure. Yeah. I know it. It's a lot of job. Yeah. But this is a simple way, you know, you just do it simple, like, because it's your first version. You know. um, page uh, number, page name, content, notes. Um, some people also call content unitary, uh, call them a content audit. And maybe some, some people even uh, separate them as a quantitative audit or qualitative audit. But the difference is that a quantitative co uh, audit, you normally just put the URL, page title, some uh, simple description there. But uh, if you want to do qualitative uh, audit, uh, you will put more information like um, uh, descriptions, headlines, messages, image details, and image size. You know, uh, you will put more like traffic information, how user uh, you friendly, the content is grammar friendly. You know, you put a lot more information on that. Yeah. So, who decides the uh, Actually, every company has already have their own uh, format, you know. And, and also you need to work with the programmers to make sure um, you just agree on some of them. Uh, like for example, maybe uh, uh, the, the page title, you know, you need to make an agreement how to give it a name. You know, you, you want to make sure it's on a certain standard so everybody understands. Um, and then if normally different companies have a, a little bit different, but the, the core is the same, just to make sure. Because you will have a lot of engineers, a lot of designers you know, work together. You want every people to be able to uh, review and understand. And every new version, you will update the, the version number, you will update the pages, update the mix uh, through the inventory. Yeah. So who decides uh, what is the priority or what is the priority? So we the the architect, information architect, yeah. The you oh, sometimes you will do some testing find out, but normally you just uh, give it a value. <coughs> there isn't a whole lot of detail like what content is on the home page. This just, I mean, this looks like a spreadsheet of, of a, like a site flow chart. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, so, I mean that's, that's all we're really looking for as far as this is concerned, except we may focus on Relevant. I, I mean, I, I guess yeah, we're not going to have any analytics on a on a prototype. So yeah, you, you, so you do it in a simple way. Make just make a simple one, you know, like quantitative audit, or okay. make it like this, you know. Okay. Make it simple, but at least um, be able you'll be able to check every version of your product. What's new? Uh, new pages have been yeah. added. What's the old have been deleted? I, I, I'm just kind of a little lost here because um, I don't understand like, where this information is coming from. Oh, um, like, well, I mean, I just... First, you need to decide decide the content, right? You need to decide... Like, how do we decide the content, though? I'm just a little... Because I'm micro, I mean, this is really new to me. Because I, I'm more coming from industrial design, so this is like a lot of research. But I just don't know how to set it up, so I'm just lost in how to get all of these figures besides like surveys and reviews and testing, right? Okay. Um, I guess how do, how do we get to this point? Right. Um, of course, at the beginning you had the research, right? Right. Uh, you from research you got to know your user needs, what they want. Okay, for example, you design some an app for the pet, for, for pet lovers. So they may, maybe they want to share videos, they want to share images, you know. 
then you will have so many pages, a home page for them to show, show uh, uh, Thailand uh, 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 new new posters. You know, maybe you will have a settings page, maybe you have a personal profile page for for. Uh, also, you will have a registration page. You know, every page you will also have some contents in it. You know, maybe um, registration you you want to like, input the emails, the password. You know, so you. Um, uh, but this normally is about pages, so it's not about every single thing uh, in in every single page, you know. Um, so for website, you have a lot of pages, you know, for mobile, you normally you don't, yeah. So should we like design our pages before we do this then, or you know, is this just a conceptual, like our page will probably have this on it? Um, or should uh, we kind of start sketching out what our pages actually are and then go through that? You don't have to start to, to design the page layouts, but you, of course, you, you got already defined what content. Will be in your product. But like the ideas behind each feature. Right, right. Yeah. Feature. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because last class you already come to the feature list, means you already can't finalize your ideas. Then you will have all the features listed. Mm -hmm. Then, based on all the features you want to provide to your target audience, you will have so many pages as your service. Right. And also, um, we we want to talk about cut sorting. You know, you have so many, so many pages already. You even build a inventory for your pages, right? So, um, but how to group them? How to organize them? You know, but this is normally for website, mobile, not that many pages. But um, <coughs> Um, you know, class sorting is for you to organize information, build a structure for your website, decide what to do, you know, to put on each page, you know, label and categories, navigations. But even a mobile site is simple. If you really spend time to design, like how many pages you think they have? Over 100. Pages what has? For, for like my app, good day. Yeah. You don't only have five menu, so five big, five big page. But if you think about all small, all small page, you have a hundred, yeah, over a hundred. <coughs> so um, you have different way to do card sorting, right? You guys know that like, open card sorting, closed card sorting. You know what's different. We got to play open, you, open you would still be adding things? Uh, that can be part, you know. Uh, actually, open card sorting, yes? Categories will be defined in closed Right. Open card sorting means you even don't put the categories first. You just give them all the cards to let them group them, let them set the categories, you know. Closed cut sorting is that you already put all the uh, categories. They just put underneath your categories. So the first way, you even get to know how people group all your information. The second way, they just help, help you organize you know, all the information you got. So that's why normally we do two ways. Uh, it's a campaign cut, cut sorting. So the first, you let them uh, just help you, just, you don't, you, you just let them group, te group together, you know, so you know how people will group your information, how they will categorize, categorize your, your, all your content, you know. Yeah, then you get a better ideas of how to categorize. So, then you, yeah. so you're saying, from the research, yeah. and from the features list, yeah. develop a content list, to put every single bit of that content list onto a card? Uh, just all the pages. Okay, all the pages, and then do an additional set of surveys with additional users, like expected users, and have them no, you don't, sorted? Yeah, you can play with users, or play with no, users. So you're saying, uh, you, you want us to have another survey where we 
where we talk to more people now and have them sort of. Yeah, you can talk to more people, or you can just within your groups, you know. Oh, but of course, so us. Yeah. Oh. But of course, the idea will be with your users, you know. Yeah. But so you know, yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah. 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 And of course, you guys can use paper, you know, stickers uh, to do the card sorting. Uh, there's some software like WebCAD, you know, it's free software, you can download from the link. Or XSort, you know, that's how, there are many uh, this kind of soft, software, you know, it, and it's free. So you can just uh, set, the, the, um, set all your uh, cards and send the link to your friends or, or target users, let them participate. <clears throat> so card sorting normally is for you help you to design the site map, right? You want to organize all the sites under a certain uh, navigation. All the pages go to which navigate, you go to which category, which uh, sub menus, you know, right? Um, so a site map is the list of pages of a site accessible to the users, you know. Uh, or some people may use the XML uh, sitemap. And XML sitemap will be like this. So you guys don't need to know, you know. It's, it's many for, for the search engine will be easy to understand your, your web structure. Very more easy to get your uh, web uh, information. Um, then you know, based on all the pages you got, you will design a task flow, you will analyze the task flow, you know, you want to know how people will go from this page to that page, you know, when they click yes, they go to which page, and they click no, go to which page, you know, click mail, go to which page, they click, uh, you know, you know um, check out, go to which page. So that's how uh, normally people do that. Um, so uh, a task flow uh, represents the specific flow of a given task, including every entry point, conditions, constructions, user or system decisions, and data or state dependencies. You know. Um, So it help you, help you to understand the, how the task is accomplished. And by doing this, you also can analyze how to make them finish a task more easily. You know, how to best optimize your structure. Uh, these are some, uh, some, uh, some um, task flow uh, we did before for our plans. Um, so uh, normally, the element for for task flow, you will have a page. You know, normally we use a square for the pages, right? But every page, because you will be so many pages, you have so many. If you don't give it a number, you will get lost. You will lost. You know. So normally you will give them a number. You know, based on their heritage, give them a number. Uh, that's one way to do it. Some people do this. Or like that, like we used before, you know, just give a dot for every uh, individual page. <coughs> so all pages. And sometimes you have page stack. Page stack means uh, it is one page, <coughs> but it has many, uh, um, so, which means you don't have to jump to another page, but you still see some changes in this page. I don't know if um, this page. So uh, a list shape uh, means uh, a decision point, you know, uh, like this. Every time when you want people to make a decision, you use this. Uh, how about this? Diamond. Uh, yeah, sex. Diamond. Diamond shape. 
And of course, you will use the connect connectors and arrows, you know, or you use some uh, dashed arrow, uh, uh, um, um, connectors and arrows to show some uh, special uh, situation, you know, for choices. But uh, that's just some simple, uh, basic way how people do it. But of course, uh, many companies or, or maybe they also have their own way to do it. Or you can use other shapes to uh, like, maybe you use uh, a round shape to mean how they uh, touch the screen, you know. So you, you, you just need to make sure everyone in your team agree with the, the, uh, the standard. Agree that uh, a square is for pages, you know, a diamond is for a decision point, a round is for uh, how people react, you know, to your product, you know. You just need, need an agreement between every people. Yeah. Um, this you, you guys just just need to know you don't have to do it. Um, just get to know it is okay. So some people even use uh, they call it uh, swim net, you know. So it's it's about task analysis, but it's more for like your customer sales contacts. It's about different departments how they use your your system to work together, you know. But it's also about the tasks, you know. But it's not exactly not much to do with your site. Well, of course, it's also involved uh, your site. Yeah. So that's uh, about the day.